Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new month edition of the Sensibility Podcast. Uh, in this month's edition, my interviewee is Alice Friedman. She is a, a Feldenkrais trainer, or is it assistant trainer? Assistant trainer. Assistant. It's good that we clarify these things. A long time, <laughs> a long time Feldenkrais practitioner, um, also a registered psychologist, um, trained in somatic experiencing, and previously was a professional dancer. Uh, why that's relevant is this month uh, we are talking about the subject of dance and how the Feldenkrais method uh, relates to it and how the Feldenkrais method can be useful to dancers in their professional activities. Um, so welcome, Alice. Thanks for coming on and talking to me. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to add anything to uh, the in the short introduction that I gave, if there's anything that I missed that's relevant. Um, no. Um, except it, it, there's something about how that my my discovering my my engagement in Feldenkrais and taking it into my my life mm. has been a journey. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, please. Um, I I live in British Columbia, which is on the west coast of Canada, and I've lived here for many, many years. But I'm originally from New York City, and that's where I trained as a dancer originally. That's where I performed. Uh, that's where I went to university and grad school. And eventually, as kind of an adventure, Anna reached a place in my life where um i something i needed something else something else was it was uh, i don't know moment of crisis i don't know what you call it self reflection um and an adventure of coming out to bc to british columbia arose and i jumped on it a chance to not be in a classroom or the dance studio and when i arrived in in bc in, in vancouver for a while somebody told me Oh, as a dancer and a psychologist, you should go see this man, Moshe Feldenkrais, who's doing a workshop. Um, and I was very much not into the shoulds at the time. So I was kind of grouchy, but I thought, oh, all right, I'll go. And so I walked in and there's a man who came in late, naturally, and <laughs> lay down on the floor and listen to this to his voice as he walked around, and it was very much my grandfather's accent. Turns out Moshe's father and my grandparents and mother came from the same town. <laughs> so I mean, this this weird confluences. Um, and I lay down on the floor and was listening and did started a lesson, and then somewhere maybe it was a second lesson or wherever it was, he started yelling at somebody on the floor, you know. And I just said, no way, I don't need this. I don't need to be yelled at. I don't need to hear anybody yelling, telling, you know, and I got up and walked out. And a while later, I discovered his a book called Awareness Through Movement. And if I had related the name of the author to the person I walked out of, I might not have bought the book. But it intrigued me. And I was obviously in a slightly different place in my life where I was a little more open to it something happening and that book just grabbed my attention and I explored it and played with it by myself for quite a while and tried things on all my student dance class students and and my you know just tried it played with it a lot and then there was a workshop by Gabi Aronitz in Seattle and I went and I really was at this place where having a very hard time with myself as a dancer where all the, the, the joy that had brought me to the, the dance to begin with the joy, the expression, the ability to create, to just connect to myself and the world in a particular way was there was a problem. I had no idea what it was, had a go to do with it, but I was, it just, the, the, you, the not the not enoughs were the big piece that I I think sometimes many dancers or I know many dancers come up with 
of a time and a place when the technique and the joy, the, the, the technique and the expectation and the, and the should and the feeling inadequate take over or interfere with that ability to sense and feel and create and express. Mm -hmm. And I had had an injury and nothing was touching it, a shoulder injury. And anyway, Gabi's class, the first lesson was this was the dead bird lesson. I prefer wounded bird, whatever. <laughs> um, and this class, this room of like 200 people, and she walks over to me and says, maybe you should try doing that not as a dancer. Mm. And first of all, it was, how did she know I was a dancer? Duh. How did I was? Um, and what did that even mean? <laughs> I couldn't. It was like, what does that mean? Um, and it was the most incredible experience mm -hmm. to actually question that and to sense myself. And it just, it was an amazing moment of discovery or that whole weekend was a moment of discovery. And then I had to wait until I found a training, but I knew, mm -hmm. I so, didn't know what I knew. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you say that, I mean, you know, we briefly spoke before we started the interview and you mentioned that, you know, dancers will often think of themselves as having a good self-awareness purely because what, you know, the the activities that they've engaged with for a lot of their life are physical by nature. So, you know, there is a self there, I don't know, an assumption that one knows oneself when you've done something like that. But... Mm -hmm. You know, what it sounds to me like you're saying is that, you know, you didn't you had an injury and you didn't have a solution for it. And in some way, Feldenkrais presented things or allowed you to approach yourself in a new way that you hadn't expected. Yes, exactly. I think that's well, that's beautifully said. It it it, it was like it, it aroused my curiosity, which eliminated my anxiety and, and self uh, beating myself up about it. I was too curious. Mm -hmm. um, but it was this assumption that, you know, that I could do anything. Mm -hmm. That didn't mean I knew how I was doing it or how it connected or that I felt that I, that it, that I was not in, in Feldenkrais language. I was not organized well. Mm -hmm. I could not arrange my, you know, how was I doing it, and how was I getting in my own way by the manner, by the habitual way I was approaching myself and movement. Mm. So in in that moment, I mean, I, I I guess, and I, you know, my experience is not in the dance world coming more from a martial arts background but some of the mm -hmm. ideas are a little similar you have an ideal yeah, that you have to aspire to and you like repetitively go after that ideal despite mm -hmm. whether you're getting it right or wrong <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think that um, my guess is that if you are if you hit a roadblock and it's your profession that becomes um uh like like a weight around your ankle you know and then doing a feldenkrais lesson in some way can open open up the the realm of possibility so that you're like oh i didn't realize that i could get new freedom or understand this thing that i couldn't do before without without the effort without the being hard on myself yeah and even that I could do this, that I could find my way to do this. Mm, yeah. Not try to find a way to do it in an imposed kind of image. Yeah. Great. Right. And that that finding my own way opened the door again for 
more understanding of myself, of the movement, mm -hmm. of being present. In an odd way, when I started my Feldenkrais training, I backed off my teaching mm -hmm. and, and performing and where I lived. Uh, that it sort of gave me permission, if you will, that kind mm -hmm. of course, or a way to let go of the dancer persona. Yeah. To explore it without living it all the time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, can you say what changed? What changed was when I came back to dance, it was with the joy that I had entered it as a child. Mm -hmm. Um, my, I, did I have the same kind of technique? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had I been able when I was dancing in New York to have that same attitude, mm. to come into it in the same way, wow, what mm. a difference, mm. you know? But it created just a whole open, it, it was like, Oh, this is what I loved about it. This is what's so beautiful about dance as yeah. expression. This is why the technique is such a, you know, can be such a delight to, to help you find something. Mm, yeah. Right? Um, and to understand so much more about being present in myself and finding how I move. Yeah. Like the, the yeah. art form of it. The art form of it, the create and the 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 understanding of self part of it as well. Mm -hmm. That Feldenkrais really offered a way to be present in yourself, mm -hmm. um, to take into whatever you're doing, yeah, or whatever offers you know, whether it's martial arts or painting or engineering or anything mm. right? yeah um so it was it was a gift mm. it's been a really it's been a real gift so i mean based on your experience so having a look at the stuff that you've done you, you mentioned you're a registered psychologist and it my sense is that those kind of ideas around um fulfilling your potential or becoming your most authentic self are part of the psychology framework in some way. It depends obviously on what type of psychology you specialize in, mm -hmm. but there's some, there's some process of self understanding and becoming the, the, the best, most fruitful version of yourself within psychology. So I wonder I wonder if the underpinnings of those connections were there in yourself prior to coming across the Feldenkrais method because you you study dance and you also studied psychology. So I wondered if those thoughts had kind of played into like your own understanding. Very much so. Um for me they were there, there was the it keeps saying there was no separation. Um, I was it, it was a journey, understanding myself, understanding movement, understanding other people, being curious. Um, a lot of what the what I learned in psychology was um, it felt static in some way. Mm. Um, I worked a lot at that point before I moved I, at the very beginning. And I worked a lot with young children and autistic children and discovering that you're not going to use verbal therapy, <laughs> so, but how do you, ex how do you get to know someone? How do you get them to be able to express themselves mm -hmm. and discovering Feldenkrais and a lot of the principles of Feldenkrais work. You know, the, the the listening, the special, the listening to yourself, listening to, to, to you know, observing, being present, mm -hmm. going slow, finding connection. Um, 
all of those things were so much part of, I transferred so beautifully into working with people in other, in, in another modality. Mm. I think it's the same kinds of um, principles applied. It's like, you know, a uh, different aspect. I see that I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner. I mm. also do this. I mean, but this is a part of what I do, but I'm the Feldenkrais practitioner who does, who mm. looks at things this way. Yeah. I mean, that's what attracted me to somatic experiencing is because I look at it as one very deep dive of Feldenkrais practitioner, you know, Feldenkrais practice in terms of trauma right? mm. uh, theory. Um, and neuropsych, what interests me about neuropsychology. Um, but that it's the principle and how they live in me and have affected my life that I are about human behavior, about human mm. discovery, learning. Yeah, no, that's really nicely sort of laid out. I love that you also said that psychology felt static in 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 a way of kind of expressing the fact that it's missing movement you know so thought or self-understanding without movement is missing a a key component um so Thank yeah you. that's a really nice i'm glad i'm glad you mentioned that because i yeah hadn't looked at, hadn't thought of it in that way um so and really... a lot of the neuropsychology now is says like you can't have a, a thought without a, a sensation or a feeling yeah yeah so. Yeah, they're very tied together. Yeah, they, I mean, I think the neuroscience now is more understanding that our thoughts are like, or the basis for our thoughts is movement. So like before mm -hmm. it was like movement was a, you know, secondary. Now they're Separate, seeing it as yeah. a primary. Yeah. You know, and thought is secondary. Um, great. Great. Uh, so in terms of your, obviously you're um, involved in a training, an assistant trainer, uh, you come into contact with dancers, I assume, on your training mm -hmm. relatively regularly. I wonder, yeah. you know, if there's, um, if there's a flavor or some kind of like, you know, obviously you said that Gabby came over to you and said that thing about try doing it not like a dancer. So I wonder, you know, after this time, like, have you, do you find yourself in a position where you can offer that kind of wisdom to fellow dancers on your training? When they ask, <laughs> when the question, when the question arises in them. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, but, you know, yes, in one way or another. I think that the work in, in by itself, yeah, supports that. Yeah, for sure. How else do you oh. do it? What are your options? Where do you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, ask yeah. the questions. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's really interesting to me to watch dancers on the floor at the beginning of a training mm -hmm. and see the same people four years later on the floor. Yeah, and how much more of them there is. Yeah, I mean, I know I noticed that the training that you have been is been running since two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. um, so a big portion of that would have been online through COVID. Um, um, the first that, year and a half. Yeah, assume that that's changed now, and you're very much in a room for the most of yeah, it. We, we graduated them at the end of March or mid March. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, but the last um, two and a half years. Yeah, we're definitely in all in person. Yeah, and for a um, while masked and you know, but yeah. <laughs> and did you um and did you have some dancers on the training? Oh, absolutely, a lot, quite a, a couple of really yes. And like, of have dancers. they shared? I mean, you know, again before when we spoke, you mentioned to me about um how what you observe about dancers and how they come to a training it's completely interwoven with their personal stories and how they've related to dance where they've been you mm -hmm. know the pressure that they've put themselves under like just, just the whole sort of you know being human and a dancer let's say <laughs> yeah. yes um yeah like I wonder you know if there's any kind of like 
I mean, maybe not necessarily going into specific detail, but like any stories or, you know, your perception of how story is an important part of a dancer's process. I think it's an important part of everyone's process. Uh, but yeah, some people, some dancers have come because they have been injured and they had found that Feldenkrais had made some difference in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Others came because they were, maybe they were still into performing more like than I had been at that time. Mm. Um, but they're at a place where they are curious of what else, where, where, where could they take it? How could this be? How could they, how could they have be of use to dancers in bringing this work into technique class, mm. bringing this way of looking at yourself into how you do any sort of dance that you do. Mm. Um, and some, you know, so, and others have come because it has fed something in their creative process mm -hmm. that they want more of and that they, you know, and I think like everybody who comes to a Feldenkrais training, um, we're really surprised by what shows up for us. Mm. You know, um, things that, that you might think, okay, well, I'm going to learn to move more comfortably. This has made a difference in my injury. And then you discover that it's changing how you think about what you yourself and what you do. Mm. Yeah. I, I had somebody come to me many years ago when I was like doing my teaching between years two and three, you mm -hmm. know, and he, he came up and he said, you know, this makes me feel better. Does this stuff change how you think? <laughs> <laughs> I practically was jumping up and down. You know? so, <laughs> so. But I think that I've seen that in, a, you know, I see that in people, but I watch dancers really change they all have a particularly beautiful quality of movement that's theirs yeah. that becomes much more present by the end of the training mm -hmm. and much less uh stylized or um performative exactly mm -hmm. great word yes mm -hmm. yeah right. yeah that, that which, persona right yeah exactly which is very like tied in with like the authenticity concept uh, or, you know, like Moshe, Moshe's idea of uh, potency, like becoming your most potent self. Itself, exactly. Yeah. And that yeah. it's about flexible minds, flexible bodies are a way of getting there and a side Benny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. There's... I just want to pick up on two things. You mentioned about mm -hmm. uh, how Feldenkrais, well, I don't know. I don't know how to polarize these two things, but you mentioned that um, dancers through doing Feldenkrais can come towards their, can help assist their creative process. Mm -hmm. So in knowing themselves more, in becoming, having more freedom of expression, that that somehow sparks creativity. Um, so I'm kind of interested in that idea. Um, but also conversely, that the same can apply to technique and form. That, you know, it can be someone else's creative process, but you can go into it in a new way because, because of the freedom of your self-expression. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know if you, you have any thoughts on the polarization between those two? I don't think there's a polarization at all. Okay, it's <laughs> good. I, actually, I think that, well, um, one of the people who I danced with, one of my teachers, um, very big deal, um, would say, I don't, if you can't bring yourself to this, to my choreography I'm not interested mm -hmm. you bring it alive okay right. yeah um, and that so that it's 
bringing yourself to the to the work how is it that you find your way through a technique right mm -hmm. how are you present what works with you mm -hmm. you can also then maybe find things that suit you you know what what how many different things you know suits can you try on and see what works mm -hmm. but i don't think i think that the creative process not everybody is going to be a choreographer yeah or want to be if you're in the dance world Mm -hmm. but you bring your creative process to embodying a mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Which right. if takes you're just out an, of a, the... a technical automaton, it's yeah. totally different. Which takes it out of the static psychology uh, like paradigm as well. So it's no longer just sort of like thoughts on paper. It's an embodied process you know an em yeah. embodied m moving process yeah it's more like jazz yeah. <laughs> yeah you know and you have great you can have great technique you can have great you know understand you know the whole all the, the musical what you know be very grounded in your musical technique mm. and then what do you do with it yeah you know mm. yeah and i think how that, do that, you use it yeah that that ties in very very well with the the finding of more possibilities within the Feldenkrais method. Yeah, right. I look at like, dance the, at, at Feldenkrais these days as in, doing FI and even ATM as, as improv. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah. And also when you're working, if I if I think of SE, everybody or or psychology, everybody has you know has their own way of adapting, of exploring, of dealing, mm. of coping. Yeah, and and you know, in some way, that's how it should be, right? Absolutely. Like, because then it's got it's. It, I mean, I've used this word already, but then it's a more authentic expression, you know, because you can have the original idea. Let's say, let's say we use the example of that first class you went to with Feldenkrais, and that was his own expression in that moment, but actually, you found a connection to it through Gabby, in her class. In a very different and way, the book. right? Yeah, and through the book, way. right? And and, and if I, yeah, it should yeah. be like that, it sh you know, Absolutely. like because we're all individuals and people, you know. And going into Feldenkrais class after that, I mean, with Feldenkrais teaching, mm -hmm. you know, it was maybe on video, I didn't have the same re response at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, yeah. not at all, because it also, I was different. Yeah, 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 my life was different. How I took in the information. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, well, I mean, I don't know. Do you have any any closing thoughts? Anything that you would like to share, or anything else you would like to share? The Feld Feldenkrais discovering Feldenkrais work really has like all of us, I think, has made a huge difference. It carry it, it's part of my life. It's part mm. of who I am. I, yeah. And it, uh, in a very odd way, you know, it's, I looked at it as, as a, what I hoped would be my first investment and a long and mobile old age. And by mobile, I didn't mean just physically mobile, but, you know, mm. adapted to, and so far so good, right? Mm. Um, <laughs> that I can still dance. Mm, nice. I, that I still dance um, in whatever ways that are open to me. Yeah. And that I think that that it can make a huge difference in taking some of these principles back into the way dance is taught. Mm. Um. So that it uh, it the it it is just a more um. I don't know how to say it, complete art. Mm. Then, it's, then, then people don't get stuck in um, some of the things that a lot of dancers have been, Yeah, that I got stuck in, for sure. That that ties in very well with last month's edition. It's similar similar idea to musicians, mm. Mm. you know, in the same place they get to and needing needing to find joy in the art or the or the work that you do. So I think it's it's a very similar similar place you get to as a professional of an art form 
that it's it's easy to get into a kind of a, a blocked state or you know um i don't know like you, you said, said performative it just keeps yeah you know, right going, yeah. yeah yeah this keeps you real and the art real and what brought you to it mm, yeah. yeah yeah and and feldenkrais can help you find that real absolutely yeah nice okay well i think that's a that's a nice place to wrap up so thank you so much You're um, welcome. thank you very much people would like to get hold of you or take some of your classes do you have uh, a website people can access i have a website it's terrible but you can access it uh <laughs> it's in process of change it's called feldenkrais learning matters.com okay I'll uh, I'll add a link to the video. Don't worry. And the best way to get in touch with me is via email for okay. classes. I mm -hmm. do two online classes a week, and one in person class. Okay. Um, okay. Great. And do you do um, FI teaching as well? I do a lot of FI teaching. I and I do mentoring. Yeah. And workshops. We and have that's... a six day retreat, public and advanced training retreat. Here okay. on Salt Spring Island, where I live in June, in May. Nice. Next so, year. sorry, where, where is it that you're based? Salt Spring Island, British Columbia. Okay. All right. So, yeah, if people want to find you in that area. Um, the yep. details will be included. Great. Um, thank you so much, Alex. Alice has been lovely to talk to you. Lovely to talk to you, Jeff. Mm -hmm.